Hey everybody, Josh here with Cripple Concepts. Um, today I'm going to make a tweak to the AXYZ router um, to make it easier to change router bits. Uh, one of the reasons I don't use this machine real often is it's got a, a collet system for the uh, for the tool here. And it's got a half inch collet, I have a quarter inch collet for it also. Um, but as you can see, this thing spins really, really freely. So changing a tool is actually a, a th or changing a uh, router bit is a three tool job. I have to have a wrench to hold the the nut up or the uh, you know, kind of the hold nut up on the uh, the spindle, and then I got to put one on the collet nut to loosen it, and then I have to use a pair of uh, needle nose pliers to grip the actual tool to pull it down and out. Uh, it's pain. It's a pain in the ass to do. Um, so I don't change bits real often. It makes me not use the machine real often. So I recently, I've, I've been watching for a while and, and looking online, seeing what different people use, and I, I keep coming back to this fellow that I bought. It's called an Extreme Extension. Um, the company's Extreme Extensions, uh, both of the X's, no E's at the beginning. And it's, it's a half inch shank. Uh, there we go. It's a half inch shank up here to go in the collet. It's got a half inch hole in the bottom for a bit. It also comes with a sleeve uh, that I have in the drawer here for a uh, for quarter inch tools. So you can run quarter inch tools in the same tool holder. And then it has what looks to be a set screw here in the side. But that set screw actually isn't just a set screw. It actually moves a little jam collar inside to suck against the side of the, the bit. Um, and there's actually an O-ring in there, so you loosen it, it's quarter turn. You loosen it a quarter turn, pull your old tool out, put your new tool in. The O-ring just gives enough resistance friction there to hold it. Then you do a quarter turn on the, the bolt, and you're off, off and running again. Um, so the only complaints I saw were some of the guys that had smaller um, routers. This is all steel, and they said it took a little, a little bit longer to spin up to speed. The reality is I run this beast full wheel bore all the time. It only has like a 3,000 RPM range um, anyway, uh, which sounds like a lot, but it runs between 17,000 and 20,000 RPM. So I pretty much just run it at 20,000 RPM all the time. Um, so I can spin it up to speed, you know, put a slight delay at the beginning of my program if I need to. This thing's also, I can't see the tag here, but it's like a 3.3 yeah, horsepower uh, three-phase motor. So it's it's a pretty powerful motor anyway. I think it'll be just fine. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change the bit. I'll probably throw you into high speed mode here just because watching me operate tools is a little boring and you'll see why it takes a while. Put a tag up to my video where I show off these magnets. They, I bought the first one for like three or four dollars. They're up to like twelve or fifteen on Amazon, and worth every penny. They're they're excellent. That works way better than getting the pin wrench back on there. So now the call it's loose, but. If I try grabbing this bit, I probably, even with two hands, yeah, with two hands, I still can't get it out. So, I take my handy dandy bite, or uh, needle nose here. Huh. Maybe my collar's not loose enough because it is a budget. I've noticed sometimes with these collets, 
yeah, if I push it in a little bit, it'll pull out easier then. I forget what kind of call it's these were. They're some weird size. They're not ERs. They're, I, I forget what they are. They're not double taper. There's some odd call. They came with the machine, so. All right, got that router bit out. Now, I need my magnet anyway, because that's how I put tools back in this. With the magnet in my mouth, line it up. All right, so we got that started. Now the other thing I considered was building some kind of a spindle lock for this. Um, but, and these collets just don't release the tools very well. I, I just, I'm really not happy with this collet setup at all in this particular machine. I'm, I'm way happier like ER collets. Um, I even have one double taper collet for a fixture I have. And it works way better. This, whatever these collets are, they're, they're shit. And part of the problem is here I'm digging, I got a pile of tools on my lap. I've got a magnet, I've got a hex wrench, I've got a screwdriver, I got a pair of pliers, and my pin wrench is still laying up here. I got half a toolbox laying on my lap just to do a tool change. And that's not to mention the router bit. The router bits are down in the drawer. Now before I actually throw a uh, router bit in there, um, I'm actually just going to run the spindle once empty. Just make sure that, that I don't hear any vibration or anything. Uh, it should actually be pretty well balanced. If you can see, there's a hole right there on that side. Hopefully that's showing up in the camera right by my thumb there. That's a uh, balancing hole. So to make up for the, the set screw and stuff on this other side, uh, the, all that thread hole and the machining there, they put a, a hole in there to actually balance these. And they're rated, I believe, 22 or 24,000 RPM is what this thing's rated to. So I'm going to grab my safety glasses, grab the keyboard, and I'll let this thing spin. All right, everything's clear. Everything's ready. I got the machine reset. 20,000 RPM test. Smooth as can be. Now I know from having other tools in here that had gotten loaded up with some wood, at 20,000 RPM, if anything's slightly off balance, you hear the the out of balance um, you know, through the, the spindle, you know, like it's, it's a very audible sound. So I trust that's good. So um, I'll go ahead and put a tool in it and uh, see how hard that is. Got a, uh, what was this, a quarter inch diameter tool, eighth inch radius, um, you know, little rounder. I did test fit a tool in here before I installed this, and, and they just fit, like it's a precision fit. And like when you pull it out, it goes, you know, like it's it's sucking air. It's definitely a nice tight fit. So any kind of debris on here or anything will hold it up.
So it just went in. If I let go right now, it'll just fall back out because I just hit the O-ring in there. So what I realized on the bench was if I get to that point, you just got to push a little bit. That's just barely hanging there. Let me grab my hex wrench. This came with just a standard hex wrench. I prefer a uh, T handle. Better on my teeth. So I just felt it move up a bit. Screw my got tightened a little bit while I was moving it around. See how nice where it is, is you slide in there, it holds. There's actually an O-ring at the top, so when you push it up, it kind of bumps up against that. And now According to the instructions, I should go a quarter of a turnips. So I'll basically horizontal. Well, that's 180 degree. All right, so rather than only needing to turn it 90 degrees, I just turned it about 200 or so. Uh, we'll see if loosening is any easier. But there you go, that's that's the tool mounted up in, in the um, quick change tool adapter. Now let's just see how easy it is to get that thing back out of there to you know simulate changing the tool. I'm trying to go just a little bit looser. I only went 180 degrees when I loosened up the set screw. And I'm calling this a set screw. It's not really a set screw. It, I'm trying to think how to describe how it works. It's got like a, a round cut, like a concave cut, and so on like a little nut so as you tighten that it pulls it against the shank so it actually is a lot more grip than just a set screw would went a little bit too far the camera's about to die if I lose you you can still see this is a little easier than the uh than just the call it was uh, i think it's going to work out but uh it's just a simple i mean it's a 60 dollar addition to a, a few thousand dollar router so um i think it's a good investment i think it'll make it a lot easier for me to use um and you know what what good is a three thousand dollar tool if you can't use it That's always good for them. Um, so there you go. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.